talk about a few of the highlights of the relationship between the United States and Slovakia, which is really very strong and profound. Um, first of all, they have troops in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, they're very, um, they took the caveats off, so they have special forces, EOD teams. EOD stands for Explosive Ordnance Disposal, which is really their own, the only team outside the United States and Canada that has uh, the fields, these EOD teams. And they played a very critical role last October outside Kandahar, base in Kandahar, where they, uh, they neutralized a bomb that would have killed a lot of people. So they were, these guys are real heroes. Uh, and they, and by the way, one of the congressmen who visited, uh, told them that story, and he put, uh, he, he put that story in the congressional record. Uh, that was Bill Schuster from Pennsylvania, who's coming back to visit. We've had a lot of congressional delegations, which is great because I'm able to use them to show how important we Americans feel the relationship with Slovakia is. Um, continuing on the military uh, relationship, then we just had General Rikas, who's the Special Forces Commander in Europe, come to Slovakia and meet with the uh, Chief of Defense. Uh, General Hurling, the Commander of the U.S. Army Europe. So the United States has a very uh, high appreciation of the role that our ally, our Slovak allies are playing in NATO. Uh, we can, the other reason that Slovakia is important is because there's a Schengen border with Ukraine on the east. And so recently we concluded an anti-nuclear smuggling agreement, which is a very, I think this is a very underappreciated uh, uh, issue in our time, is the whole issue of uh, nuclear proliferation. And the Slovaks are playing a very important role in that, detecting um, trucks that come across the border. And they're very sophisticated. They're, they're so good that, the, that uh, the United States works with them to train other countries uh, in that field. Um, I think that one of the um, major dynamic, uh, dynamics of the relationship between the United States and Slovakia is that if you look at where Slovakia has come, in a very short period of time, 22 years, but really, uh, to be fair, you, you could really trace it just from 1998 after the Metsiar period, because uh, as we all know, it kind of went downhill a little bit on the Metsiar, and then it started going up in 1998. So in 14 years, up until the 2008 crisis, it was literally the fastest growing country in Europe, uh, economically. And uh, they got into NATO, they got into the EU, so this is a great, uh, very successful uh, story of a country in that region. There are a lot of other countries in that region, in the Eastern Partnership and Western Balkans. We'd like to take the same path. And uh, things have slowed, as you all have read in the papers, I'm sure, the whole EU integration has slowed down a little bit with the financial crisis. But we hope that uh, Europe will uh, enjoy more integration after they get over this uh, financial crisis. And we hope that these other countries will follow the great example of Slovakia. But the point is that the Slovaks actually take a very proactive role in working with these countries like uh, Montenegro, Serbia, to encourage them to join the, the, to join the EU. It's a very complicated process, and they have a very pragmatic uh, mentorship program. And they even are, um, there's an organization called the Community of Democracies that uh, works with aspiring democracies to help them along the, the same path. And the Slovakia has actually taken on Tunisia as a uh, country that they, they're working with to talk about security sector reform, talk about democratic reform. So this is a very important role that they're playing because the way Tunisia goes could tip, you know, it's very important for the, the whole region. Um, we have the State Department, we have a, a program called the Emerging Donors Challenge Fund where we will match funds that uh, the Slovaks uh, spend on their NGOs and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs on these kinds of programs for if they, they'll apply and they say, we're doing this in Macedonia or Georgia or whatever. We match those funds, which is, I think is a great program because I think that uh, Slovakia in many ways is, in a, a be is so better suited than frankly we are to work with some of these countries because they've come through this uh, experience themselves and they can talk about, and they're very, I would say, modest about, uh, they're not, um, they're modest in, in sharing their transitional experience. They point out the 
strengths and weaknesses of what they did right and wrong. So uh, I think it's a great program. Uh, under the last administration of uh, Prime Minister Radachova, she brought Slovakia into the Open Government Partnership, which is a uh, program that was uh, co-founded by the United States and Brazil to introduce open government around the world. And uh, to her credit, Prime Minister Radachova saw this as a real signature uh, legacy for her and her administration. I'm very happy that uh, Prime Minister Fico currently is continuing that uh, program. And basically what, what it is is that each country that signs on as a member of that uh, presents an action plan where they're going to introduce more transparency into their government pro processes so that the citizens can see what their government is doing. The United States is part of it too. We have our own action plan to improve our access of information to citizens. Um, interestingly, the, the uh, Slovakia, just for the first time ever, um, uh, sold bonds in the United States for the country. Very successfully, the new uh, Minister of Finance, uh, Peter Kajmer, and his deputy came to the United States maybe a couple weeks ago and had a roadshow in New York and San Francisco, and for the first time ever uh, had a successful sale of bonds. Um, as, as you all probably know, the, uh, there's a very lively American commercial presence in Slovakia. There are about 125 American companies, very active. U.S. Steel is the largest private employer in the entire country, next to the government, which is the largest private employer. And they're in uh, the eastern part of the country, uh, in a town called Kosice, which is the second largest city in Slovakia. And they're a great corporate citizen. For, uh, they give back to the community. They build a hockey stadium, and they're a very generous, uh, as I say, corporate citizen in the, in the center of town. Uh, so I'd like to conclude um, my talk with uh, two uh, words of encouragement. Uh, and one is to encourage the Slovak American community here to seize the opportunity in 2015, which is not too far away, to celebrate the 100th anniversary, the centenary of the Cleveland Agreement, which I think is uh, not well known, uh, at least in Slovakia, and uh, not particularly well known in the United States, uh, certainly in the United States. And I think it's important to recall this uh, history to show the strength of the ties between our two countries. And the second thing I want to encourage you to do is uh, Mayor Ptachnik has uh, come a long way to Cleveland to introduce himself and to talk to key leaders around the city. So if any of you have any uh, ideas for projects, you know, cultural or business or in any field that you feel would be uh, fruitful, you know, come to us after the session and we'd like to talk to you to see if we can get some of these things going. So thank you so much for your hospitality.